Hi, my name is Tracy and I'm a mortician. And I'm Trish and I'm not. And welcome back to another episode of... Are you dying to know? Because Trish is dying to know. I am dying to know. Hi everybody. Oh, hello. How are you all? Hi. How's your week been? Oh yeah, very busy. How's it? Mm, busy, busy, busy. It was busy. a short week this week. It was a short week and it was a short week the week before so it made it even extra busy because them short weeks, you know... <laughs> So you come to work on a Tuesday when there's been a public holiday or a bank holiday on the Monday and um, you come to work and you have no idea of how many people have come in over the weekend yeah. and no. are in your cool room? No, I mean, I could really, if I wanted to, go, go onto my computer and check the work computer, but I really don't. <laughs> like, right. But I just, yeah, no, I don't really know how many people have been transferred over that long weekend. So there period. could be like 15 or 20 bodies ready for you to prep when you yeah. walk in when after walk a long in. weekend. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Jeepers. Yeah. That's a lot of work. Yeah, I tend to not like bank holidays or public holidays on, off because it makes the week busier. Yeah. I kind of yeah. just rather work. Yeah. And like this week, uh, I had to go in on the Saturday because I had a big case to do that was going to take me all day. Yeah. And I went, I really don't want to do this case on Tuesday. When you've got. When I've got all my mm. other uh, preps to do because I want to take my time. There's a lot of time management like, in your job, isn't yes. there? Because you've got people coming in all the time and then mm. the the um, timing of when their service is or when their viewing is and how, how you have to get them mm. ready and in what order and who's yeah. got clothes that have already arrived yeah. and who hasn't and chasing yeah. all that. Do we have the coffin? Yeah. Are they going into a certain coffin? Are we having, um, you know, is it a burial? Is it a cremation? To what kind of prep? Removing, like, devices and stuff like that. There's all kinds of stuff. Interesting. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. Mm. So we've got an interesting one today. Mortician hacks. Oh, yeah. Little tricks that you use in the mortuary to oh. make things sit the right way mm -hmm. or look the right way mm -hmm. or make the body behave in a way that you want it to behave when maybe it wouldn't otherwise. Okay. Mm. Anything mm. you think of? Let's have a think. There's a few little hacks. I know one do. that surprised me when I found what? out. We'd been doing this channel for about two years and then I found out randomly in some random conversation that Tracy makes a foot strap at the bottom of the people's feet in the coffin, like a seatbelt to hold their feet so that if they're in the coffin in the hearse and it's going up a hill, they don't slide down in the coffin and when you open it up, they're gone because they're right down the end. Do you so actually I, put a strap in? I actually strap them, yeah. I put a seatbelt around the foot. It's a strap around the foot and staple it onto the coffin and it's, it basically stops when the hearse is going up and down a hill, stops that person sliding because the wheel, especially if they're small, if you've got a little old lady that's like, you know, a teeny weeny uh, and will slide down. Because it's happened before where you've gone and opened the coffin for a view and you go, <laughs> not there because you've got the, the side end. sheets and they've slid down the end and you go, oh, come up here. So just to clarify, you're yeah. stapling the strap, not the foot. Oh, not the foot, no, no, we're, no, it's a strap that I made, it's a, it's basically a white strap, I strap it uh, around the, it's like the, the bottom of the foot, around yeah. the middle of the it's foot. It's just like a, a break. Yeah, uh, yes, it's just basically so, remember them, remember in the 80s, you know them stirrups? Yeah, yeah, you used yeah. To get, basically it's like that, putting a stirrup on, you know. And there you go, and obviously when there's a viewing or open casket at the uh, open coffin at the funeral yeah uh, you're only seeing to here aren't you yeah yeah because we've got the the side sheets that are all nice and fancy around there but if the family want to open up and have a look foot, they're just going to see a strap yeah it's not no big deal it's nothing you know awful or anything yeah. like that it's neat and tidy and it, it, it's always like you know so but yeah you don't normally see it so. all right what else uh another hack is <laughs> you know you think it's really you know when you watch the movies and you've got the yeah, you've got that. Well, over. for a start, people don't all do that. No, they don't do that. And it's really sometimes difficult to have the hands in a position and stay in there because they just want yeah. to do this. Because they've got weight to them and yeah. they've got no muscle time. Yeah, and sometimes they just want to just go down and you're going, oh, I just can't get them the hands to stay where they are. And some people request this for yeah. their families. Mm -hmm. It's very rare. But like in the Greek Orthodox and Russian Orthodox, it has to be right hand over left hand. Mm -hmm. It has to 
we have to do that. One of the hands, I keep slipping. And you know, I was like, oh my goodness, I've got to get there. So my little hack is I get some um, towels, some little towels. I roll them in balls and just put them under the elbows in the Prop coffin. Prop the elbow, elbows up. And it keeps them really Cute. nice. And oh, that's nice. It's like, like a little that. cushion for the elbows. So Lovely. that's another hack. Easy peasy. So if you've not done that one, that's a great hack. And just on that note, you once had someone who requested a root finger. I did, I did, I did, I did. And how so, did you, you had troubles with that, didn't you? Yeah, I did because I had, I had to basically try and uh, get the hand together and, and, and forgive me, but they wanted that finger uh, in the air. So I had to, to weave the fingers together and get the other fingers down and get this one to stay up, basically. So what I, I, I think, I, I don't know if I, I did it, but I think I might have put a bit of cotton just in between the fingers so that one would have stayed up while the rest were down. So yeah. that one. Yeah. So you've got you it like yeah. this, you know, it's like People uh, have all sorts of requests. It really do. So that was quite a funny one. And also I think another one is if you've got somebody that's just slightly slightly too tall for the coffin and you think, I don't want to go to an oversized coffin because an oversized coffin then it's going to be too big for the person. And the myth is that you break their legs, which obviously you do not do. Oh, absolutely. Never, ever, no. ever. <laughs> but absolutely. we've had that question before. No. People have asked. No way. No. Absolutely no way do I break bones of anybody. No. So the, the hack to get, if there's just a few little centimetres or an inch that we like, you just can't fit them in, is put them in the coffin the legs are going to be up in the air a bit, so all I do is roll a big towel up, put it under the knees, bring the knees, and that drops the feet in, and the knees are up slightly, so it's a little cushion for the knees. So oh, then you've cushion. got them in, and they're all very comfortable and look really fine. Comfy, and it's like being on your massage table. Yes, on my massage table, we put a little little yeah, cushion little under your cushions, knees. It yeah. takes the pressure off the lower back. That's right, so it's Quite a bit comfortable. Like that, so I can imagine... They're very comfortable like that. Yeah, that's so nice. I quite like that one. That's nice. Um, oh, what about if you aren't doing a full reconstruction, but you've got a wound that's quite deep in somewhere that's going to be viewed on the arm, oh, on the face yeah. or somewhere like that? Yeah. So there you go. If I haven't got any supplies in, a nip to the art shop, mm -hmm. to the art shop and get some uh, clay and putty that you would uh, sculpt with, you know, if you're doing it. Yeah, any like sculpting. air dry clay. Yeah, that's the one. Mm -hmm. Air dry clay. It's, it's really good. You know, using a bit of that, filling in the wound. So say there's a big cut or, a, you know, I don't know. This a big is, lesion or something. Yeah, or yeah. maybe this has been a cancer cut out or sometimes people have the cancers and they've got little holes. So I would do the, um, place all that inside, smooth it down. And then I would go over the top with latex and stipple the latex to match the... Just in that little area, not yeah. a big no, patch. No, no, just, yeah. just this area. And then stipple the latex to match the little pores that we yeah. have on our skin. Yeah. And then make up over the top. And right. You most of the time won't know. Won't it's know there. the difference. And it's quick, it's easy, and it's... Uh... And it means the family don't have that distressing thing of seeing the wound. Like yeah, it's, absolutely. You know, if they've yeah. asked for that to be done. Yeah, yeah, mm. it's and it's, uh, you know, and sometimes if it's titchy, which you will put a little bit of tape on, but most of the time if it's really small, it's much better not to put tape on the face and use the yeah. the the air clear that dries and just go to the art shop and... Uh... There's a hacky use here. Uh, for the teeth? Yeah. Oh, when I don't have to. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's my best hack. I do love that. I mean, I, many morticians might use it as well. But um, I, I, I like cotton in the cream that we put on their face. Uh, I'll basically make prosthetic teeth with the cotton. Just and, a little roll. Yeah, and I'll mould it with all the cream and then I'll fit it into the mouth. And um, I will, if I get a photograph, it's great. But you can usually see how the mouth's going to sit once you start building the teeth um, with your cotton and cream and you know and the beauty of that is if it looks ridiculous and the mouth's out there you take it out and yeah you put less in yeah or... because you're very conscious of making it look natural and yeah, not, not full and not like yeah, this yeah. and all yeah. of that so it's it's the beauty is you can add and you can take away so there's no permanence to yeah. that and of know? course you can always ask the family for teeth but sometimes they don't have them yeah yeah that's right and sometimes we've had requests and i just had one recently where they didn't want the air false teeth used they went please don't put the false teeth in put them in the coffin with them but we don't want them in but, oh, okay you, you know sometimes but 
because they didn't like to wear them. I think there's the reason. Yeah. There. Yeah. But can you make it look like the teeth are in? Yeah. Yeah. So that's so I do. Um, do you get lo like... lots of requests for different things yeah. like that, don't you? Yeah, there's so... one you've told me about before that's it's quite gruesome, um, and it's you know for pretty severe cases, and that's the corseting that you've done before. Oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what would you use that for yeah. first? So of course, it, I would use on traumatic cases. Uh, one it could be this is not nice, but people falling from a height. Yeah. And what happens is sometimes they're actually still in one piece as the the body hasn't opened up anywhere, but the the impact the forces impact them to flatten out. Flattens the body mm. out so quite wide because the the whole um in the whole body's smashed inside. You know the skin's held everything in, but the the bones are shattered inside and everything's just gone flat. So we've got families that want to view. So you've got to make them fit the clothes that they're going to wear to and also bring them back to a normal size that they would normally be. So it's not shocking for the family. Yeah, and also yeah. to fit them in a coffin as well. Yeah. Because it, the, they can be quite wide. can be quite wide. Yeah. So corseting is a really good hack. If you've never done it before, if you work in the industry, it's really good. So what corseting it is, as you, you know, we wear corset. Well, we don't wear corset, but, you know, the old-fashioned pull the corset in, yeah. the Victorian. It's basically a the shaper. same idea. Yep. Yeah. But I use a sheet. And mm -hmm. so just a bog-standard, plain white sheet and place it under the deceased once I've done all the prep. And then I cut... Um, strips. strips on either side of the sheet. We want the corset to fasten down the, the side. side here. We don't want the it here. And obviously I can't get to the back. It's really difficult to put somebody upside down and corset it like yeah. that way. So I corset it from the side. So what I do is I'll bring the sheet over. And now I've got all my strips out and mash. I'll start tying them yep. and tying them and then bringing them tighter and tighter and tighter through the middle area till eventually we get this whole area put back into place and then you can dress and then you can dress over the top and because i've got the little knots down the side you can't really see them because the arms covering it and the clothes are covering it and you know that you've got your hands up so that's a really good hack for traumatic cases where we bring people and it's into the, a nicer shape. It's horrible to talk about, but the, the whole reason and the purpose behind your job, basically, mm. is so that if a family wants to say goodbye, to start the grieving process by viewing their person, that they can do it in the yeah. least traumatic way possible. Yes. And, um, and as we've said before, you always tell them. If they ask, yeah. you tell them what you've done, you tell them why you've done it, you tell them if they want to know... Yeah what state their person was what in injuries they had you tell them yeah we don't we don't um we don't lie and no. we don't pretend it's not about hiding and pretending that's the point no. i'm trying to make it's yeah. about it's yeah. about being as less confronting as possible for the family yeah. because yeah. it's already a traumatic time yeah and they're, they're asking the question because they want to know and i think yeah you're right from years ago we were brought up to like not ask them questions you know but families do actually want to know the details because you know? otherwise your imagination runs wild doesn't it if you don't know <laughs> it absolutely and, um, runs and, rampant yes so you do need to know yeah yeah oh, people ask the questions you know and and we will warn them and say what I'm about to tell you is, you know, pretty gruesome, you know, really gruesome. And we would don't go in like, oh, you know, this was hanging off there. This we we'll just explain what the injuries were yeah. and where they were in a kind and yeah. and caring Absolutely. and diplomatic kind of way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and the families are always grateful that you know upset as you would imagine, but always grateful for the truth. So anyway, so, there's some hacks. There is some hacks. It's smoke and mirrors, some of the stuff you have yeah. to do. There's a bit of, um, like, especially the reconstruction stuff that yeah. you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of um, rebuilding and remaking. And, like, yeah. you, you use things like plaster of Paris. Yeah. Um, you use lots of different, you know, like it, fishing wire. You yeah, use... Yeah, absolutely, wiring. And also, you know, going to the local DIY shop to get my... Like hardware store. Yeah, yeah. like all the, the instrument tools I need to rebuild to do that You've kind been of known thing. to use your husband's hair to replace eyebrow hairs. I have, yes. Things like that. Yes. Whatever it takes to make it look... To good. make it look natural. Natural. And, you know, get everybody getting their goodbyes. So, yeah. 
There's a lot of different You do hats. a good job, Trace. Mm -hmm. You do a good job. Aww. Everybody out there in the industry, we need you. Thank you for the work yeah. that you do. You. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care. We'll see you next time. Bye. See ya. Bye.